Hi everyone, my name is Carol Yeh Garner and I am joining you today so that we can talk about how to get your mindset straight and do a guided imagery exercise to set your intentions and get moving forward for 2020. So happy new year everyone. Um, I'm a Young Living Royal Crown Diamond, and Jill is part of our team. And when Jill asks you to do something, you jump and do it because you love her so much. And she's done so many amazing things for me and our team. I will do whatever Jill wants me to do. So anyhow, um, let's talk about 2020. It's a new year and a new decade. I'm super excited about having this new decade. I don't think it's ever really hit me quite so um, strongly as this year of knowing like we're going into a whole new decade and 2020 just seems bizarre to me. Like I remember, you know, I was born in 1969 and 2020 seemed like, you know, we'd have like flying cars and stuff like that. Um, so let's talk about 2020. Like if you can put into the comments, um, what you would like to have happen for your business, for yourself personally, um, so that I kind of have a gauge of like what we're, we're going to focus on today when we do our guided imagery. I would love to hear about your goals for your business, your goals for yourself, your goals for your family, and also some of the things that might be holding you back. Some of your fears, some of your blockages. Um, so if you can write those into the comments as you get on here. And while you guys are doing that, I am going to start talking about the three laws of the mind. So these three laws of the mind are something that I always, always, always talk about whenever I do any kind of talk about mindset, because I think it's so hugely important because I think that we just aren't taught how to think the right way about our thoughts. We just kind of let our thoughts happen and we just take it for granted and we aren't aware of how powerful our thoughts can be, okay? So the first law of the mind is that every thought creates a physical or chemical change in your body, every single thought. And so research shows that we think anywhere between 20,000 to 60,000, the more I'm reading, it's more and more it's saying like 40 to 60,000 thoughts per day. Um, and that's a crazy amount of thoughts, right? And so the reality is the majority of our thoughts are in our subconscious mind in that kind of like background, in the background of our thought process, those automatic thoughts that we just aren't even really paying any attention to. So the conscious thoughts that we have are just this like tiny, tiny percentage. And the subconscious thoughts are a huge, crazy amount of thoughts. And they can range from anything like, you know, I'm a failure. I'm never going to get going. I'm never going to rank up. You know, I don't have enough friends that have money. Like all of those thoughts that we've said to ourselves over the years they're recorded in our brain for forever. And every time we say those negative thoughts, those fear-based thoughts, they get reinforced and more and more powerful so that they just are like in the background playing more and more every time those thoughts come through our brain. So every single thought creates a physical or chemical change is a super important fact to understand because if we are only aware of like this much of our thought process, then we better make sure that we're paying attention to the kinds of thoughts that we're allowing to just float around in our head. Um, so a great example of a thought creating a physical change is the placebo effect. So the placebo effect is something that they have to take into account when they do a medical experiment, right? And they'll take a, 
a group of people that have the same health issue, they'll divide the group into half and half will be the control group and they won't get any treatment. Um, they might get like a sugar pill or some kind of fake thing, but there's nothing, no medicine in that control group treatment. And then the other group will get the actual treatment, the new medicine or treatment that they want to test, right? And when they do these two experiments, the people that are in the control group or the treatment group, they don't know which one they're in. They just believe like, I could possibly have the cream that could help my skin condition, the pill that's going to help me with cancer, the whatever, you know, it is, right? And so they take it and they hope that it's going to be the thing that's going to like magically fix them and help them. And then when they look at the results, the scientists have to always take into account that within that control group, there's going to be a small percentage of people that will have a placebo effect, meaning the control group that got no treatment whatsoever, there's going to be probably like a 10% group of people that will have the same successful outcome as the people that got the medication, the treatment. Okay, wrap your minds around that. 10% or so of the people that got no treatment will have the same positive effect as if they took the treatment, had the treatment. And it's because they think and they hope that they might be getting the treatment and that's gonna work. They're looking for the signs that are gonna make the skin condition go away. They're looking for the signs that their pain is going away and they're hoping. And as soon as they even like have an inkling, a tiny little bit of success, they're like, oh my gosh, I probably have the treatment thing. And so that just continues to snowball. And the thought that they might be in the treatment group and that the treatment might be working creates the physical and chemical changes that actually create healing within the body. Okay? So that's so, so powerful. If people can heal themselves just by their thought process without having any kind of treatment, without having any kind of medication, what can we do with our thought process? There was an example that I love to tell about people that had knee surgery. If you know, I recently hurt my knee when I was skiing this um, last week. It's getting better. And I'm manifesting it to get better. I'm manifesting that whatever has happened to it, that healing is happening. I'm sending healing light to my knee. I'm oiling up. I'm using my biomat. And I'm manifesting that in two weeks' time, that whatever the diagnosis is, I don't really care, that my knee is fully healed. Okay? But this great, amazing experiment was done with people that needed arthroscopic knee surgery. And so they did the control group. Usually the control group would like get no treatment, right? And the treatment group would get the surgery, but they decided, well, you can't really do a no surgery and surgery to compare and contrast. So they're like, I don't know, let's just pretend like we're doing a surgery. So the control group got the epidural so that they're below the waist is numb. They're laying in the surgery room. They have a drape so they can't see below their knee. The doctor, surgeon's on the other side in the lab coat and all that. They do little cuts on the knee where the scopes would actually go in. They would move the like things around so that the person would think that the scopes were actually inside that their own knee. And there was a TV up in the corner that the doctor was looking at that the patient could also see the inside of someone else's knee during surgery. These scopes have cameras go in, they find out where the bone or whatever is rubbing and they remove it. And the doctor says like, oh, awesome. Like here's where, what's causing the pain. We're going to get rid of it. See, it's gone. Your knee pain is going to be totally fine. You're good to go. Sewed them up and never told them like, you actually got nothing done other than like a little surface cut. And when they compared and contrasted the difference between the control group and the actual group that got the surgery, they were astonished to find out that the success rate was the same. Okay? Mind expanding that somebody that did not get anything removed, that had a diagnosis of needing surgery because of 
whatever the knee issue was, they healed themselves because they lived through what they thought was an actual arthroscopic knee surgery. They felt it, they saw it on the TV, they heard the doctor say, here's the part, we're getting rid of it, look, here it's gone, you're all good. And they had the scars on their knees to prove it. So they, for all intents and purposes, they thought they really had a surgery that removed something out of their body. And that thought process created the physical and chemical changes to create healing in the body. Right? Crazy. Okay? So that's law number one. Every thought creates a physical or chemical change. So we need to make sure that what we are thinking is on the right track of what we choose for our life, what we hope for our life, what we desire for our life not all the things that we do not want to have happen. And for whatever reason, our brains go to what we don't want to have happen, right? We think of what we want, we think of what we choose and desire, and then the five bazillion things that could go wrong are constantly going through our head. So that brings me to law number two. You can only think one thing at a time. When you have two conflicting thoughts of, oh my gosh, I really want to rank up to the next rank, but like, oh my gosh, like I've been trying for like weeks and months and like I just can't get a kit sale for the life of me and like everybody that I know doesn't have money and blah, 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 but I, I really want to get that next rank, but this, that, and the other and blah, 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 right? Like how many of you have that dialogue going on in your head? When we have that kind of dialogue of, I want this, or I really, you know, I choose this, but, and then have like that myriad of like all the catastrophe things, all the failures, like all the worst case scenarios, our brain goes, I don't know what you want me to do. You want me to help you rank up or you want me to do all of these other bazillion negative things? I don't know. I'll just stay stuck. I'll just stay here. Until you figure it out. So then your brain and your body, your brain's not going to do anything. The universe, God, whatever you believe in, that ultimate divine power, whatever, is going to be like, I'm not clear on what you want. So let's just hang out until you figure it out. And so oftentimes that's what's happening when we're stuck in life, stuck in business, is we're constantly having these thought processes that are going back and forth that are giving confused messages, confusing messages. So you can't do opposite things at the same time. And when you have those opposite thought processes, they just cancel themselves out. So I want you now to try to stand up. Try to stand up and then give me thumbs up when you stand up or thumbs down when you can't stand up. Meanwhile, I'm going to read your notes. Okay. So you can't try to stand up, right? Some of you stood up. I'm seeing thumbs up. So you failed because you stood up. <laughs> I told you to try to stand up. Trying to stand up looks like this. Not being able to stand up. Failing to try to stand up means you're actually standing up or you're just sitting there not even trying, right? Trying means it's not going to happen. Trying means that you have not fully committed to the goal that you have set forth for yourself. So you can't try to hit the next rank. You can't try to help your team be more inspired or more motivated or whatever. You can't try to be better in terms of drinking more water or eating healthier or going to the gym more. You have to just choose to do that, right? And so those of you that gave your thumbs up, you chose to just stand up. And for those of you that chose to sit, 
you chose to sit. No, but you can't try. It doesn't work, right? Um, so trying to do anything is, again, giving that mixed message. You can only think one thought at a time. So let's make sure that the thoughts we are thinking are ones that we're choosing that are in alignment with what we are hoping and choosing for our future, for our business, for our personal life. Um, okay, so the third law of the mind is, um, oh God, just had a brain fart. Third law of the mind, oh, is that our thoughts become our reality, they precede our reality. So that's a little hard for some people to wrap their minds around, but the reality is physicists and scientists have proven this to be true. We are all energy, we're actually vibrating energy that is vibrating so fast that we look like we're like a whole piece of a body. And this bookshelf is vibrational energy that has moved itself in a way that has made it so that it is hard matter and it's wood and it holds stuff up but all of it is energy okay and what scientists have shown is that our thoughts are little waves of energy and so if we have 20 to 60 thousand thoughts going out of our head that like little waves of energy the law of energy is that anything that leaves the source comes back to the source so if all i'm doing is spending time thinking these ping-ponging conflicting opposite thoughts of like oh my gosh i really want to hit platinum or i really want to hit silver but man like my team just like dang, I got like these chicken legs that just aren't doing anything. Like, oh, like I keep trying to help them and like they're not doing anything or like, you know, they're just aren't like super motivated and I can't get them to do anything. If we're thinking those kinds of thoughts, not only are we like canceling any movement, but that's what's going out and that's what we're attracting. We're going to keep attracting people onto our team that you know, are just very casual users. They might be super gung-ho about wanting to do the business, but they're gonna continue just being like, eh, you know, I'm good. Um, so what you want to do differently is focus on what kind of business people do you choose to have? What kind of business people do you want to attract to your team? I want kick-ass, motivated, self-sufficient, independent, go-getters, problem solvers that are gonna just kick butt at this business. And that's what I choose to manifest and bring into and focus for my team and for my business. And when I have team members that aren't fitting that, I still love on them, I still give them and offer them my time and my help and resources, but I'm constantly focusing on bringing in more people that are gonna just like run and get it and go and want this. And that's what's happening, okay? But if I only focus on like all the negative stuff and all my fears and all my worries or have those conflicting thought processes, then that's what I'm gonna keep bringing in to my life. So the third law of the mind is that your thoughts precede your reality. So it's so super duper important to focus on what you choose for your life, for your future, instead of letting life happen to us. It's so, so important to lean into knowing that you deserve happiness, abundance, prosperity in all areas of your life. And that maybe you never got that message growing up from anybody else in your life but you do deserve it and every single person on this earth deserves wellness health abundance and prosperity don't you agree and so whatever the little messages are that say well but you know so and so told me or like i don't know like i've never been lucky and blah 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 like we can think all that crap all we want and it's so easy to get that going but it's really important to to identify that we're thinking that way 
like, oh crap, like I've been like sitting here for like 10 minutes just like focusing on like everything that could go wrong or like all the things that aren't happening in my business. And then take a deep breath and say, cancel, cancel, delete, delete. And just like, no, like you're breaking that pattern of thought process. You're not going to let that thought process continue to just play in the background and get more power. You're breaking it off and saying, cancel, cancel, delete, delete. And then you're putting in to your brain the program the recording of what you do choose for your life i choose blah 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 right like i choose that i am bringing in the right people for my business that i'm developing relationships and people are just coming into my life that are focused on growth and positive and all the things that I want to do in my life, I'm attracting all those kind of people and they're just falling into my lap all the time. Whenever I go out, I'm meeting someone that is a potential new business person and it's awesome and they're super excited and motivated. End of story. Like, that's it. No, but what if, I don't know, that waitress that I met, like, I don't know, like, she seemed excited, but, like, you know, she hasn't responded to my text, and so, like, I don't know, I guess I, she was probably just, like, giving me a load of bull, whatever, I don't know, wah, wah, wah. Or I can follow up with her and say like, hey girl, like, you know, I'm super excited that you were interested in the business. Like, let's set up a call. Here are some times that I'm available. What works for you? And just keep building the relationship. Um, so the conscious mind and the subconscious mind are also super important parts that I want to talk about. And I also talk about this every single time that I talk because it's really, really important. Conscious mind is the part that you're aware of. It's your rational thinking part of your brain. It's also the catastrophizing worst case scenario part of your brain. And then you have your subconscious part of your brain. That's the part that controls all of your bodily functions. It makes sure that your lungs are working so that when you're sleeping, you're breathing more deeply. When you're exercising, you're breathing more deeply and quickly, right? Um, it digests your food without you having to think about it. It allows your blood to flow to all the right places. It lets your brain kind of shut down when you are sleeping and it turns it on and helps you stay focused and concentrate while you're awake. So your subconscious mind controls all of those bodily functions, but it also is the powerhouse of your brain. It's the recorder of your brain. It's the memory center of your brain. So from birth until now, it's recorded every single thing that's ever happened to you and every single thing that you've ever said to yourself. So like I said before, we often focus on the negative. So all of those negative statements have now become this program that's just kind of like playing in the background, hushed, like white noise in the background. And we need to change that. And that's why oftentimes we can consciously know this is the path that I choose. These are the things I need to do to change and move forward in my life for my business or for my life, whatever it is. And no matter how much conscious effort we put into knowing and moving in that path, we stay stuck or we go in the opposite pathway, the negative way, because our program, that background white noise of all that negative stuff that we've ever said to ourselves, other people have told us that we chose to believe is so much more powerful than the new knowledge because we let it be more powerful. But now I'm telling you, you have to choose to stay focused on the positive of what you choose for 2020 in the next decade and for the rest of your life. It takes practice, it takes awareness, and it takes a lot of cancel, canceling, delete, deleting of all that negative stuff because you've had blank many years of thinking that certain way. And it's gonna take a little bit of practice and mindfulness and awareness to pay attention to the fact that you're thinking that certain way, canceling it, deleting it, and then choosing to put into your brain the kinds of thoughts that you do want 
for your life that you choose for your um, next decade and future okay so any questions so far before we get into um, the guided imagery let's see somebody at least uh or do i say i will move past this um it's not letting me go back to your original question um when you're focusing on what you choose for your future you just act as if it already happened you say it and or you can thank god the universe whatever um or just be grateful for bringing into your life what you have chosen for your future for your business for your personal life it's not even necessary to like say like and i don't want or like that other stuff um just focus on the, the positive the statement as if it already happened saying i will or i want I will become a platinum. I will become an executive in 2020. Uh-uh. I don't want you saying that because I will just puts it out there. I choose to become an executive in 2020. I choose to be vigilant about my IPAs so that I become, that I am an executive by blah, blah, blah month. Now, a lot of you might be like, oh my gosh, I would never like say like, oh, I'm going to be an executive by April because like, what if I fail? Okay. What if you fail? Are you going to give up? Are you going to quit? Are you going to be like, oh, I'm so devastated that I didn't hit it and I'm so embarrassed? Yeah, sure. You might be devastated. You might be embarrassed people might laugh a little bit and be like, ha ha, especially the like haters of the MLMs, right? However, after you grieve the fact that you did not get to executive by April and you focus on the fact that like, this is not something I'm going to give up. You're going to look at what you did from January till April and identify what worked and what didn't work. And then you're going to, come up with a new plan and make a new goal and do what you need to do so that you can become executive by whatever month you choose. But oftentimes we choose not to be specific in our goals because we're so afraid of failing. But failing's not anything bad. I mean, it's an ego punch for sure, right? But failing just means, okay, I didn't have the skills and the resources or I didn't utilize the skills and resources that I have available to me effectively in order to achieve the goals that I chose for myself. So let's examine what I did well, what didn't work, and let's reshuffle the deck, add some more skills, add some more resources in so that I can do something different to get to my goal. Um, and so I think a lot of times people get so fearful of failing that they don't even try or they think that they're trying, but they're not really even trying, right? And trying, it doesn't really work anyway, right? Um, just like trying to stand up doesn't work. So focus on what you choose, be vigilant with your thought process, be brave in what you choose for yourself and be specific so that your brain really is sending out the right messages so that God, the universe, whatever you believe in can hear it and bring it back to you. Um, okay, let's see. I, hi, Tammy. I'm teaching a class on manifestation right now. <laughs> um, okay, Brenda, feels like you're talking straight to me. Yep. Okay. Tammy, I'm a magnet for prosperity and abundance. I love that. Like put that on your bathroom mirror and like say that every day when you brush your teeth in the morning and when you brush your teeth in the evening. Um, this is live. So once it's done, it'll be available for anybody to rewatch. Okay. Um, so let's do a guided imagery. Um, what happens during a guided imagery? I'm going to talk, 
you're going to relax. You can sit in a comfortable position. You can lay down and get comfy with some pillows and a blanket. I'm basically going to talk. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of relaxation. And then my talking will hopefully get you to a point where your conscious mind, that thinking rational part of your brain, that is also the part of your brain that is the negative Nelly, the Debbie Downer, the worst case scenario thinker can just kind of like step aside so that your subconscious, that really powerful memory powerhouse of your brain can come to the forefront so that it can absorb the messages and the suggestions that I'm going to talk about in terms of moving forward, getting rid of blockages, getting rid of fears so that you can move forward in your life in the direction that you have chosen um, that may or may not have happened so far because of all those blockages. Okay, so when you're doing guided imagery, um, it might just feel like you're sitting there listening to me talk. You might get bored and your brain might kind of wander off and think about, you know, what your plans are for tonight, for New Year's, about what people are going to be eating and how much you might be drinking or like whatever. It might be thinking about the kids going back to school next week. That's great. If your conscious mind is busy thinking, well, I'm here kind of blabbering away in a pretty monotone voice. That means your conscious mind is over here busy thinking about like whatever. That means your subconscious mind can come to the forefront and listen to what I'm saying while you're kind of like zoned out. Um, and so it might feel like that where you're just kind of like thinking about other things. It might feel like you're listening to every word I'm saying. That's totally fun. And it might even feel like you're kind of taking a little 15 minute nap. Um, it might feel like two minutes actually. Um, so if you kind of zone out and don't even hear what I'm saying, that's perfectly fine because again, your conscious mind is going to get so relaxed or kind of like take a little nap that your subconscious mind will be listening to me. Okay. Your subconscious mind is always on. It never turns off. Um, so it's going to be listening to me no matter what. Ideally, your conscious mind just gets out of the way so that as I'm talking, your conscious mind is like, well, that will never happen. You know, that negative Nelly voice will want to be critical of things that I'm saying. Um, and so it's better if you can just let yourself relax, allow yourself to relax as I walk you through the relaxation part of it, and then just go wherever you need to go. And then when I bring you, um, when I talk you back to a a very conscious state um, will chat about your experience, okay? Um, we go in and out of this state of consciousness and not so conscious all the time. So if you've ever driven home and had like highway hypnosis or driven home and like forgotten to go to the grocery store because you needed like the one thing for your dinner and you just got like so in your zone that you got home and you're like, ah, oh, crap, I forgot to pick up the dry cleaning or if I got to go to the grocery store to pick up those green onions or whatever, that's the state that we're going to be working with. So it's not anything that's like foreign. You've all experienced it before a bazillion times in your life. Um, I'm just going to walk you through that experience. Okay. So go ahead, get yourselves in a comfortable space whether you're sitting and what, if you're going to sit, then I just want your feet firmly on the ground. You can put your hands on your lap. And then if you want to lay down, just get pillows, whatever, get a comfy blanket and just get comfortable in whatever position you want. If you need to move, go ahead and move. If you have a scratch, go ahead and itch it. If you want to shift your position, do whatever you need to do to get comfortable. It's not like you have to sit there and like never move and never think a thing in your head. You can think whatever you want to think. You can move and do whatever you want to do to move and get comfortable. Okay. So I want you to now just focus on, um, oh, if you have oils, apply your oils. Take a little break. Go get your oils. If you have humility, go get some humility. If you have your abundance, go get that. Um, humility, Gary Young, 
talked about it when he was in the Hawaii Big Island trip and he would get um, inventory lists of all the oils, all the products. And he was always, he said he was always surprised that humility was not one of the top oils. Um, abundance was one of the top 10 oils. Um, and he said, can't really have true abundance if you don't have humility. So now I always apply humility before I apply abundance. Okay, so apply your oils, whatever oils. If you don't have either of those, just use whatever is nearby and intend for those, whatever you're using, to have the same energetic frequency as humility and abundance. Boom, done, easy. Okay, so go ahead and get comfortable and go ahead and take some deep breaths in and out. Go ahead and close your eyes. I'm just going to look down so that um, it doesn't feel like if you want to look at the screen, you can, but I'm just going to look down so that you don't feel like I'm staring at you, even though I can't see you. So just take some deep breaths in and out. And as you breathe out, I want you to focus on your breath allowing yourself to feel the relaxation deepening every single time you exhale. So breathing in deeply through your nose or your mouth, all the way in, filling your lungs up all the way, and then exhaling and just feeling how that exhale allows your shoulder, shoulders and your chest to just relax. And so I want you to imagine that right above your head is a really beautiful sun. And the warmth of that sun is relaxing the muscles on the top of your scalp. And as you exhale, you can feel that sunlight going down into your cheeks, relaxing your cheeks and your jaw, letting your tongue fall away from the roof of your mouth letting your jaw muscles and your lip muscles relax, feeling the warmth from that sun, moving down into your neck, allowing the front of your neck and the back of your neck to just release and relax. And again, another deep breath in and exhaling and just allow that sunlight, that warmth, to just let your shoulders sink into the frame of your body, relaxing and releasing deeper with each breath and bring that relaxation, that beautiful sunlight, that warmth, that loving energy into your chest, sliding it around through your rib cage to your back and seeing it and feeling it and experiencing each vertebra just releasing and relaxing one by one all the way down your back. Just letting your back relax, allowing your arms to relax now from your shoulders into your elbows, moving that sunlight, that warmth, that loving energy from your elbows into your wrists, into your hands, all the way down to your fingertips, allowing each finger to just be so relaxed. Maybe they might feel heavy. Maybe they might feel light. They might even feel a little bit tingly. And go ahead and feel the relaxation moving down your back, your stomach and abdomen through your hips. Every exhalation, just allowing yourself to go deeper and deeper into relaxation, into comfort, allowing that loving energy to move down into your thighs and your knees the back of your knees into your calves and your shins, moving down into your ankles and into your feet, the tops of your feet, the bottoms of your feet, all the way down into your toes, the soles of your feet are relaxed, your toes are relaxed, and just scan your body from the top of your head, the crown of your head, through your face, through your jaw, through your neck and your shoulders, 
your chest, your arms, your back, your hips, your thighs, your knees, your calves, your ankles, down the tops of your feet, the soles of your feet, all the way down to your tiptoes. And as you exhale, just scan your body to see if there's any other spots in your body that need a little extra focus to relax, to just release, to just let go so that you can sit there or lay there in complete comfort and relaxation, allowing every breath you exhale to bring you deeper and deeper into relaxation, into comfort. And as you breathe and as you relax and as every breath allows you to go deeper and deeper, I want you to just focus on your breath and on my voice and on the comfort that you feel throughout your entire body, so relaxed, so comfortable, so deeply comfortable, so deeply relaxed. And just allow your conscious mind and body to stay here in this nice, relaxed, safe, comfortable space. And allow your subconscious mind to come on a little journey with me as we set some intentions for 2020 and focus on some things to help you move forward in your life in the most abundant, pros prosperous manner you could ever imagine. So I want you now to think about you as a little child. I want you to find yourself and imagine or think about you as a small child, probably like under five years old. And I want you to imagine yourself in one of your favorite places as a child. Maybe that might be your backyard. Maybe it might be your bedroom. Maybe it might be at grandma's house. But it's just such a warm, inviting place to be. It was your favorite place to be as a little, little child under the age of five. So I want you to see you as that little child so full of energy, so full of life, so full of love. And you, as this little child, is sitting down in this favorite, safe, comfortable, loving space. And I want you to see as if this was like a TV show. You're watching yourself on this TV as a little tiny child. This is a magical TV and I want you to go up to the TV and because it's magic you can actually step into the TV. So you can step into that scene, that episode of you as a little child under the age of five in this safe, wonderful, loving environment and I want you to sit next to the little you. And the little you can see you, can hear you, and talk to you. So I want you to ask your little you, just, you know, how are you doing? And introduce yourself to the little you. And the little you is so excited to see you, is so happy to see you. Maybe she or he gives you a big, great big hug and snuggles up in your lap. And I want you now, the adult you, to talk to this little you and tell the little you all the things that you wish that other people would have told you. I want you to tell the little you all of the wonderful things that you are capable of doing because you are you. I want you to be able to tell the little you 
all of the things you wish you would have heard from other people in your life. How wonderful you are. How valuable you are. How smart you are. How you were meant to have prosperity, wellness, abundance in your life. Wonderful relationships. A successful business. Financial abundance and freedom, time and freedom, that you deserve all of those things. And as you tell this little you all of these things, you can see the little you's eyes just getting big, just soaking it all in and just hearing every word that you're saying. And I want you to just tell that little you all of the things that they deserve, that she or he deserves in life. All of the good things, all of the good qualities that that little you has that may have been hidden away at some point or shoved away at some point because somebody in your adult life told you that it didn't matter, but you know it matters. And so you're now telling that little you all of those wonderful things all of those unconditionally loving things, all of the things that that little you needs to hear so that that little you, as it grows up into the big you, knows that he or she is fully capable of making smart decisions for him or herself. That that little you, as it grows up, is able to be self-sufficient empowered to make healthy, happy, good decisions for yourself and for your life and for your business. And so maybe you can hear those messages that you're saying to the little you. Maybe it's more of just an energetic kind of thing as you snuggle that little you and nurture that little you in your lap as that little you just looks up with those wide, astonished eyes of joy and love as you just say those wonderful words, those loving words, those supportive words, those empowering words. And your little you just soaks it all in. And you can see in that little you's eyes that they are soaking in every message of empowerment, of wholeness, of love, of support, of kindness. Everything that you ever needed, you are now pouring into that little you. All of the messages, all of the skills, all of the resources, all of the things that you know that little you deserves that little you needs to hear, you're able to give, whether you're aware of it or not, you're giving that energy, you're giving that message to that little you. So I'm just going to be silent for just a moment while you finish up. And again, it may be something you're conscious of, and maybe it might be something that you aren't even aware of. It doesn't even have to be words. It just can be feelings or an energy or a color that you're transferring to that little you. So go ahead and finish up. You can always come back and do this exercise again to give more to that little you. Okay, go ahead and finish up giving the skills, the resources, the empowerment, the bad assery, the goodness, the all the things to that little you. And give that little you a big hug and let that little you know that you, the adult you, will be there for that little you always knowing that you can come back to this moment anytime to give more messages, more love, more kindness, more support, more empowerment to that little you. 
And I want you now to step out of the TV and find yourself sitting on a nice comfy chair with a remote in your hand. And as you now fast forward through your life, now that you've given that little you all of the skills, all of the resources, all of the love and support and empowerment that that little you needs to be the most successful, most empowered person, I want you to fast forward and see how that TV is now playing a completely different life because the little you has all the skills, resources, and love and support necessary to be the most successful person. And go ahead and fast forward it to this moment where you're sitting in your chair in this moment. So it's fast forwarded all of those years and you've seen all of these amazing things happen and now pause it on the moment of you seeing yourself sitting in the chair looking at this tv and now i want you to fast forward the tv the program and see how as you fast forward you see all of the glimpses to show you that the skills and the resources that you gave to that little you are now also in you now. And they're helping to make the rest of the TV episode of your life the most successful, the most empowered, the most happy, joyous, prosperous, abundant, humble, loving, most amazing life. Your young living business grows because you have confidence. You have the motivation. You have all of the skills and resources necessary so that you can be resilient and work hard and move forward with your business. You're able to build the relationships so that you can have amazing team leaders on your team. You're able to make all the right decisions of where to place people, what to do, how to grow your business, what you need to do next so that your business grows and grows and you continue to go up in the ranks. And as you fast forward that little TV episode of your life, you see also how your life as it moves forward, it's also full of abundance and humility and love and support and friends and relationships and just the most wonderful life that you could possibly have full of health and wealth in all areas of your life. And so just go ahead and pause it anywhere in your future. Maybe it's when you hit diamond. And go ahead and play the moment when you hit diamond. And notice that you are looking at your computer or your phone and you've refreshed, refreshed, refreshed. And then bam, there it is. It says that you're a diamond and you have tears in your eyes. Um, you have people calling you. Maybe you're with other people that are just screaming and shouting and you're jumping up out of your chair and you are just so excited because you knew that this was going to happen. You knew diamond was in your future. It just feels so good to know that you have arrived there in actually a shorter amount of time than you had planned. And you're just so incredibly proud of your team and all of your team members who have worked so hard, who've just been growing themselves personally and professionally to become the best leaders. And just, it feels so amazing to know that you've accomplished this big goal with your team and that your team 
was right there with you and you're getting phone calls and texts and everyone is so excited for you. Your heart might be beating faster. Your hands might be sweating. You might have tears in the corner of your eyes. Your cheeks might be hurting because you're smiling so hard. But I want you to just see and feel and hear and experience the excitement of that moment. See it, hear it, feel it, and make it real. In that moment, and all of this that I've talked about, this entire guided imagery has been recorded in your innermost mind, in your subconscious mind, forever and ever. And the more and more that you focus on it, the more and more you remember it, the more and more that you think about it, the more that you go back and talk to that little you and give that little you even more love, even more resources, even more skills, the more successful you become, the more empowered you become, the more confident you become you're already more confident, you're already more motivated, you're already more empowered to take control of your business, to do the work that is necessary to help you move forward in your business and in your life. And so it is so. Now I want you to take a nice deep breath in and exhale and feel the feeling of success of knowing that your future is now going in the direction that you have chosen and you have all the confidence of knowing that this is your life no if ands or buts this is your life's path and you are going to make all the decisions that are in alignment with that and the universe god whatever you believe in is going to continue to give you signs to show you that this path is your future or even better so in a moment i'm going to count from one to five when i get to the count of five you're going to open your eyes you're going to feel nice and refreshed as if you took a short nap and you're going to just be so filled with excitement for your future that it's going to be hard to contain. So one, feeling yourself coming back to the space within your body, whether you're sitting or laying down. Two, taking a nice deep breath in. Three, wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes. Four, stretching your hands over your head, taking a nice deep breath and exhaling your eyes are almost open on that next number. On the next number, you're going to open your eyes. And when you open your eyes, that's going to be your sign that everything that I have said in this guided imagery has now been permanently programmed back into your brain. And you will be moving forward in your life in so many unexpected amazing ways that you are so excited about so on that next number you're going to open your eyes and only open your eyes when you're a hundred percent in agreement that everything that i've said in this guided imagery session is now permanently programmed into your subconscious mind that powerhouse of your brain that is going to make things happen for you and take control of your life on that last number you're going to open your eyes feeling so refreshed so excited for this next new year and next new decade five opening your eyes feeling completely alert and energetic as if you just took a nice nap and go ahead and tell me what you guys experienced how many of you stayed awake for the whole thing how many of you didn't hear a word after a certain point how many of you got tears in your eyes when you saw yourself hitting diamond how many of you got tears in your eyes as you were giving those messages to the little you what did your little you say to you 
how did it feel to be giving those messages to the little you? I want to hear all of that. Um, so go ahead and comment. I'm excited to hear what your thoughts were and what your experiences were. And this will be recorded. I'm going to, once this is done, I'm going to end the live video and then it'll be available for you to re-listen to, to re-experience, to share with your team members. Um, uh, I have a bunch of my previous workshops that also have guided imagery exercises available on my website, which is just my name, Carol Ye Garner no hyphen dot com they're available under the guided imagery recordings and it's free so you can use them for whatever however as many times as you want with your team um okay so sadie said tears love when i was with my little me suzanne awake really hard to leave little me and then ecky ac tune in too late will be replay yeah so do it um tomorrow or tonight um yeah it's pretty powerful to go back to the little me and give that person that little human being that just is starting their life um all of the messages that we feel like we may have missed out on so i encourage you to do that little exercise tears of joy to be with my team celebrating our success yeah so being able to feel that success of seeing it happening on that TV or even in person, just that allows that image to be programmed into that subconscious part of your brain so that that is the goal, right? Your brain knows those waves of energy that I talked about. Those are the waves of energy that are going to go out, that are going to come back to you. And whatever needs to happen between now and then, the universe, God, whatever, your thought process, as you continue to focus on that moment of feeling the tears of joy of success of your team and you becoming a diamond, that's going to continue to just bring in the energy and bring in the people that you need to have come into your life for your success for your team to be um, a success um tears talking to the little me i was seeing my oldest daughter as me uh, my little me was so happy to get the helpful info i feel empowered and ready to walk across the stage for our cd um was in and out with my brain cooperating that's totally fine so it doesn't have to be tough anna um, if you were in and out, that's perfectly fine. Like what I said, if your brain was not paying attention, that means your conscious mind was not paying attention. I don't care if your conscious mind was paying attention. I want your subconscious mind to pay attention. And when your subconscious mind is busy thinking about other things or even feeling like you're asleep, that's good. That means your con subconscious mind was busy so that your subconscious mind could hear and take part. Okay, she just shared how strong and amazing she is that she'll go through so much, but it's going to grow her into a magnificent woman and will change many people's lives. Yep. Don't compare yourself, just love yourself. Yep. Tears when I was with my sharing with my little me. It reminded me of the joy I share now with my grandbaby and all the innocence I once had. That's awesome. Yeah, so I encourage you guys to replay this and listen to it again. The more that you do this exercise, the more it's going to just help reinforce that program to be the more powerful program versus the old programming that was in your brain that was keeping you from hitting your goals and moving forward in the direction that you wanted. So listen to it once a week, listen to it every day, whatever, um, or anytime you're just feeling drawn to it, go ahead and just let yourself, you know, experience that little exercise or just, you know, take a deep breath, close your eyes, go visit your little me and give your little me all the messages and skills and resources that you need. Um, you now have those tools to help you. Thank you for joining me for this. And I wish you the most wonderful 2020 year and decade. And again, if you want more guided imagery, I have them free on my website. I'll put it in the post. Um, I've got 
a bunch of different workshops and a couple um, podcasts of stuff about mindset, stuff about entrepreneurship, stuff about blockages with your business and other guided imageries that you can listen to. Okay. Um, you're welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining me. And I will hopefully get to meet you all someday soon. Bye. Happy New Year.